Hey guys and welcome back and today I want to continue looking at the Synology C2 cloud platform. Now I already did a video about this around about a month ago where I first talked about Synology C2 cloud and how to set it up for the first time but just at the end of that video I did allude to the fact that what I was going to do is come back to this service a little while later just to show you the sort of things that the C2 platform can give you the analytical advantages it provides and something I didn't really plan for but I got to learn about is what happens at the end of your subscription. Because a number of you are wondering, what does Synology do with your data at the end of your subscription? Whether you choose to cease uh, proceeding with your account, or if you just put it on hibernation or just want to delete it. And I'll talk about that later in the video. But I've logged into the same Synology we are using before, and if we make our way into uh, a number of the apps, if we go for the Hyper Backup module there, and we can see that Synology C2 that we set up for my guide the other day. Ignore this one, because this was a sync with a NAS that I've since removed from my network, hence why it's a little bit freaky there. Now, the C2 account there, there's lots of options readily available. If we click here, it will open up this C2 window, which I've already logged into. Um, but if we have a look here, we can have a look at some of these options. Now, there is the option of different versions of our backup as well. So there's all the time managed backups that have happened every single day around 7 p.m. And if we go into at the top here, we can look at more options too. So we can go into the Backup Explorer, which will then show us all of those lovely backups. And this is something that you get not only with the C2 backup, but also via Hyper Backup itself, whether you're using third-party cloud backups or if you're utilizing other NAS or R-Sync options like that one, you can look at all the different versions of that backup that have been created, whether you were creating independent backups or, not dissimilar to snapshots, incremental changes over time. As you can see, not a huge amount of things have changed on these files in that time, but small incremental changes to thumbnails and some images that have moved around are involved in there as well come out of the back, uh, Backup Explorer, we can have a look at some of the other options. So, oh no, there's a Backup Explorer, and then it's come out of that. Sorry, wrong option. Have a look there, go back. We can look at some more backup statistics based on the backups that we've done over time. Let's get rid of that. And the backup statistics is where we learn where the file changes happen. So, as we can see, that incremental file difference there changed at that point. There was more files added to the Photos bin and it increased that storage from around about 300 to around 350 gigabytes. Now again, you can set up alerts, and on top of that, you can see a lot more information in the background there of all the things that have happened with your storage with relation to the system, and you can change the parameters of how you want those statistics to be viewed. We're only using around about a one month um, overview here of this service, but once you use this over time, you can get more real-time information about your backups. And remember, this is what you're seeing via Hyper Backup and Synology C2. This isn't just about C2. Finally, we can have a look about the backup integrity, and it can run checks on the integrity of the backups, making sure that there isn't anything wrong with regards to fluid or dynamic IPs or other services that are going to interrupt this integri uh, the integrity of this backup. I'm not going to run it now, but it's nice to know you have an option. And of course, you can change all the parameters of that backup as you see fit without having to redo the whole thing. And again, you can go all the way down to files now in their new versions. So that is the backup there from the Synology side. But what about on the C2 side? Let's log in to our Synology C2 account. Now, this can be accessed in two different ways. You can access it via your Synology account, via the NAS, or you can go straight into the Synology account C2 folder and see about the amount of storage used and the success of all your individual backups. The subscription here, as you can see, if we go into it, my current plan is not able to be restored. And that's because I've left this video till one day after the subscription service, the trial that I set up, ran out. Now, the reason I've done that is to show you guys what happens when your trial expires. Originally, I had a tier two plan that was showing here, if you caught my original video. And I'll come back to what happens at the end of your trial a little while afterwards. But from here, we've got lots of uh, information with regards to our backup, so we can go into a little bit more detail too. And from here, via the C2 portal, remember this isn't using your NAS, this is using the internet 
and your C2 backup cloud, you can now see the versions of the files that you've been backing up. Just the same as we saw before, but this time we can go all the way into these folders if we so choose. We can go and get more information. We can see about the tree of all of those files and access our C2 files just on the C2 cloud, not just via the NAS, which again, I am using over the internet here. Now, it is a very, very solid platform as far as cloud providers go. Don't get me wrong, of course, there are other cloud services out there. You have cloud services from the likes of uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, and more, but the fact that this is all in-house and accessible via a single portal cannot be understated. And again, just like we could on the NAS, we can go through all these different versions and see the changes that have happened on our storage. Now, a lot of things can be changed about our storage, and also it does tell us where our data is living in the world right now. There's still lots of other information there about the background of C2, but imagine you're using this service and you are going to be running that trial. Maybe you wanted to just try this out, maybe you're running the service permanently, and then eventually move to another platform. One way or another, you're going to want to know that your data is deleted. Now, hopefully on screen right now, maybe on the left-hand side of the screen, we can look at the email that I received this morning from Synology C2. It details what happens at the end of our account. As you can see that the C2 Backup Cloud, according to the email, has gone into limited mode. We can still access all of our data, but backups will now cease. And we have approximately one month, give or take, probably about 20 to 25 days, to do something about that data. Otherwise, that data will be permanently removed from the Synology C2 account. So for those that were worried about Synology holding onto this data permanently, or were hoping that even though they cease the C2 account, that they can still access the data, I can confirm that the data is removed from C2 at the end of that account. There's loads of other options that are open to you, but I've got to say, in, in terms of fluidity and keeping it all in-house with your NAS, it is rare to see a NAS provider providing cloud space via the internet as well. And of course, because you can enable things like encryption, there are lots of other options available too. And there you have it. That is Synology C2. I don't know about you guys, but again, it is streamlined. It's very easy to use. And don't get me wrong, if you already have an existing Google Drive or Dropbox knocking around in the background of your NAS, I can see why you might not make the jump. But what I will say is having a NAS drive and a cloud service from the same provider can be hugely, advent hugely advantageous to your backup strategy. Now, my trial has expired, but of course, there are multiple options going forward that you can go for. And again, with that trial too, too, the thing to really look at there is that data deduplication. The idea that you could have multiple backups all running to the same cloud area, but with more um, common and, let's face it, identical files being backed up across multiple locations on different system backups, data deduplication can be handy. But it still works out significantly cheaper than that of Dropbox and Google Drive. And the very fact that you can go up pretty high with service levels that are relatively unseen elsewhere it is a great way to have your backups between your NAS and the internet and ensuring you have a next, another tier in your backup strategy. But I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any further questions about C2, do let me know or go to the NAS Compare article in the description. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click subscribe and I'll see you next time.